Episode 10, why polyglots are fascinating. If you're listening to this podcast because you're learning English, then I'm sure you already know how challenging it can be to learn a foreign language. Perhaps you've even managed to learn two or three different languages. Learning any language is a great accomplishment. But imagine if I were to tell you about some incredible language learners who have studied 14, 20, or even 50 different languages. Not only this, but they are actually able to speak many of these languages with an advanced level of fluency. In this episode, I want to talk about why I find people who are polyglots so fascinating. I'm going to tell you about three of the most experienced polyglots alive today and how they have inspired me to change the way I approach learning languages. I also have a little gift for you that I created to help you learn English more effectively. It is a guide where you can discover seven language learning techniques and tips used by the world's most talented polyglots. But I'll tell you more about this and how you can access it at the end of this episode. Before I begin, I would like to wish you all a happy new year. I know that we are now in February, so I do feel a little ridiculous to be saying this so late, but this is the first episode I'm recording in 2023. So I think it's important to acknowledge that we are in a different year and give some explanation for why I disappeared from the podcast for the whole of January. The reason is quite simple. In Brazil, we have just had the summer holidays, which means my daughter did not have school for over seven weeks. As a result, most of my time each day was spent playing football with her, as that is the only thing she ever wants to do now. Also, I was lucky enough to have my mum visit me in Sao Paulo for the last two weeks of January, so we decided to spend some days on the beach. I did find some time to continue teaching, and I created some new English courses for my online school, but unfortunately, I didn't manage to find time for the podcast until now. However, it is great to be back finally. I have lots of new episodes planned and some interesting guests raised to invite onto the podcast. So, welcome back everyone. I hope 2023 will be a successful year for us all, not only with regards to language learning, but in all areas of your life. If this is the first time you're listening, then you're also very welcome. If you don't know me, then I'm James, an English teacher living in Sao Paulo. These podcasts are created to help my students develop their English comprehension and vocabulary. If you find this episode difficult to understand at any moment, then I recommend reading the free transcript while you listen. You can find it on my website at schoolofduda.com. Okay, let's get to the subject of today's episode. I think the obvious place to begin is to explain what exactly a polyglot is. Actually, the first guest I invited on this podcast was my friend Joanna, who is a Brazilian polyglot. In this episode, we spoke about all the languages she speaks, but we didn't go into too much detail about exactly what a polyglot is. So I thought it'd be nice to dedicate an episode specifically to this subject. But if you have not already listened to episode seven, then I really recommend you check this out if you're interested in hearing about Joanna's life as a polyglot. The simple answer is that a polyglot is someone who speaks multiple languages. But how many languages? This is the part that not everyone agrees on. I heard someone say that if you can have a conversation in a bar in three different languages, then this is enough to call yourself a polyglot. However, most experienced linguists suggest that you need to be able to speak at least five languages with a high level of fluency before you are considered to be a polyglot. For me, this definition seems to make the most sense, and I'll explain the logic for why. A person who speaks one language, their native tongue, is called monolingual. Someone who speaks two languages is bilingual. Three languages, you are trilingual four languages and you are multilingual, therefore it kind of makes sense to me to call someone who speaks five languages fluently a polyglot. By the way, the word polyglot originates from the Greek word polyglottos, a combination of poly, meaning many, and glotta, meaning language. A polyglot, therefore, is literally a many-language person. 
At the end of the day, the term polyglot is just another label. And most of the polyglots I know don't really give much importance to labels like this. Acquiring the polyglot label is just one of the consequences of doing what they love. In this case, learning languages. There is also the term hyperpolyglot, which is another label, this time for an even more select group. Today, hyperpolyglot is generally used to describe someone who can speak 11 languages or more. I remember the first time I discovered that a hyperpolyglot was a real thing, and it really blew my mind that there was anyone who could speak as many as 11 languages. To me, this seemed superhuman and still does, if I'm being honest. But interestingly, there are more and more hyperpolyglots being discovered in the world. This is perhaps largely thanks to the internet. In the past, very few people would have the opportunity to travel and live in different countries where they could acquire multiple languages. Most people did not have access to foreign books or native speakers who could give them the necessary contact required to become fluent in one language, let alone multiple. Nowadays, almost anyone with an internet connection and the determination to learn can become a polyglot, or even a hyperpolyglot. Well, at least in theory. In reality, only a very select number of people find the motivation and dedication it requires to learn so many languages in this way. So, when did I first become aware of polyglots, and why do I find them so fascinating? Even though I've been learning languages for over 20 years, I didn't really know anything about them. I vaguely, more or less, knew the meaning of the word polyglot, and that was about the limit of my knowledge. It was not until a few years ago, during the pandemic, that I first began to experience the incredible world of polyglots. I think I must have watched a video about some polyglot on YouTube. And the next thing I knew, the YouTube algorithm was feeding me new polyglot videos every day. And the more I watched, the more polyglots I discovered, each one sharing their story, their passion for languages, and their invaluable knowledge built up from years of experience learning languages. It was like I'd been playing basketball in the street for the last 20 years, and suddenly I discovered that there is this thing called the NBA, where all the world's best basketball players played. And now suddenly I'm learning from the greatest, like Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and Kobe Bryant, all sharing their basketball wisdom. For me, these polyglots are the NBA superstars or the Olympic athletes of the language world. And although their talents do not earn them the same level of fame or fortune, I think they are no less deserving of our respect and admiration. Just like professional athletes, many of them have put in thousands of hours of practice to master their skill, and as a result, their passion and dedication is equally as inspiring. Discovering all these polyglots changed the way I see and approach languages in three important ways. But before I tell you about this, let me introduce the three polyglots, or more accurately, hyperpolyglots, that I want to talk about in this episode. The first is the Italian polyglot Luca Lampariello, who speaks 14 languages. In addition to his native Italian, he also speaks English, French, German, Greek, Hungarian, Spanish, Swedish, Russian, Dutch, Polish, Portuguese, Japanese, and Mandarin Chinese. What I find impressive about Luca is the high level of fluency he has achieved in many of the languages he speaks. Obviously, his level in each language varies, but at least in the languages I understand, English, Portuguese, Spanish, and German, his fluency sounds very impressive to me. I've even heard Spanish people say that they can't believe he is not a native. Another reason why Luca stands out from other polyglots is not only how accomplished and competent he is in his languages, but he is also very good at explaining to other people how to learn languages effectively. He has an excellent YouTube channel and a blog where he shares his knowledge and experience of learning languages in a very clear and articulate way. He also seems to live a balanced life with many different interests beyond learning languages. 
and also looks like he makes time for a good social life. His approach to learning languages is very moderate. He does not say extreme things like, you must study five hours of grammar every day, or never study grammar. His approach seems balanced, and I think this is another reason why he's so highly respected and successful in the language world. The second polyglot I want to mention is the Canadian Steve Kaufman, who speaks 20 languages. Don't worry, I won't try to list them all. In the polyglot community, Steve seems to be like everyone's favorite granddad. I say this because he is 77 years old and comes across like a very genuine and nice guy. He has led an interesting life living in different parts of the world, like Hong Kong and Japan. Since turning 60 years old, he has been able to learn over 10 new languages, demonstrating definitively that you are never too old to learn a language. Steve also has a language channel on YouTube, as well as being the founder of Link, a successful online platform where you can find comprehensible content to learn over 40 different languages. Steve seems to have a more romantic approach to learning languages. He is less concerned about trying to reach a very high level in each language and more focused on being able to communicate and connect with other people and cultures. He doesn't worry about making mistakes. For him, the pleasure is in the learning process, and this continues to motivate him to learn more and more new languages. Finally, I want to mention the British polyglot Richard Simcott, who has incredibly studied more than 50 different languages. Although states that he only speaks 16 languages fluently, but can speak about 30 languages in total to some degree. He lives with his family in Macedonia, which I find interesting simply because I don't know anyone who lives in Macedonia. Also, that he was born in Chester, which is not really interesting, but I mention it because it's the city I was born in. He is known for his ability to learn languages in very short periods of time and has passed C1 fluency exams after only three months of study. C1 refers to the common European framework of reference for languages, and it is at an advanced level. In fact, there is only one level higher than C1, and that is C2, so to pass this exam after only three months is incredible. Another thing I find interesting about Richard is the fact that he raised his daughter to be multilingual. As a parent myself, who is raising my daughter to be bilingual in English and Portuguese, it is great to hear about his experience doing this. However, as you might expect, Richard's family is a little more ambitious than mine. His wife is Macedonian, so they all speak Macedonian at home. He also spoke English and French to his daughter since she was born, later adding one hour of playing in Spanish and one hour of German each day. Now his daughter is fluent in five languages. If you're interested in learning how to raise a multilingual child, then I'll leave a link in the references where you can hear Richard talk about this in more detail. Richard is also the founder of the Polyglot Conference, where you can meet other language learners from all over the world and listen to talks about languages. Last year, it happened in Mexico, and they choose a different country for the event each year. If you like languages, it looks like a great conference and you don't actually need to be a polyglot to participate, which is good news because I would really like to experience this one day. Earlier, I mentioned that discovering these polyglots changed the way I see and approach languages in three important ways. So let me explain. Firstly, I became inspired to learn multiple languages at the same time. Previously, I'd always focused on studying one language at a time. I thought it'd be too difficult for me to learn two languages simultaneously. When I started learning Portuguese, I deliberately ignored German, and as a result, I forgot most of my German. When I started learning Spanish, even though I live in Brazil, I more or less ignored Portuguese, or at least I stopped actively studying, reading books, and listening to Portuguese. Gradually, I noticed my Portuguese was suffering as a result. But when I saw these polyglots who were able to learn and maintain five different languages or more, 
often practicing and using them in the same day, I realized that I should be able to at least study two languages at the same time, maybe more. So I began to experiment by not only studying Spanish and Portuguese each day, but I also did a little bit of German, as well as learning some of the basics in Japanese and Italian. Admittedly, this new routine only lasted a few months. Eventually, I decided to pause learning Japanese, Italian and German for another time to give more focus to Spanish and Portuguese. But it was fun while it lasted and it showed me that I was capable of doing a lot more than I thought was possible. This leads me to the second way my approach to learning languages was influenced by polyglots. Before, I considered learning languages as one of my interests, like a hobby. But seeing how these polyglots integrate learning languages into their lifestyle made me realize that this is one of the most important factors for their success. Luca Lampariello says that often people think that he must spend 10 hours every day studying languages and never have time for anything else. However, he says that he typically only spends one hour a day with his head in a book, actively studying languages. But this does not mean he's not learning the rest of the time. He says that the secret is to combine language learning into your lifestyle. Look for blocks of unused time during the day and use them to practice your language skills. For example, a typical day for Luca might go something like this. Wake up and spend 30 minutes writing in Greek, followed by 15 minutes of reading in French. While eating breakfast, listen to the news in Polish. Listen to a German podcast while in the shower. Read a book in English while taking the bus to work. Have lunch with a Colombian friend and practice Spanish conversation skills. Listen to the evening news in Russian while cooking dinner. Spend 15 minutes writing a daily diary in Portuguese before going to bed. This example shows how a polyglot like Luca might be able to include as many as eight different languages into his daily routine. The key is to maximize the use of dead time, like time spent on the bus and transform it into productive learning time. Luca also recommends creating fixed habits, such as always listening to the news in Polish when eating breakfast, or always a German podcast when in the shower. Personally, I don't like to plan out my time so rigidly or have a strict schedule that is inflexible, or maybe I'm just not disciplined enough to do this. But after observing these polyglots, I no longer consider learning languages as just another of my interests. Now I consider it a lifestyle. I'm definitely a lot more relaxed about how I integrate languages into my lifestyle, but the biggest difference is that my mindset has changed. I still give myself the freedom to do what I want, but I'm disciplined in the sense that I always try to prioritize foreign languages over my native language. If I'm listening to the news or a podcast, reading a book or watching a film, I do it in Spanish or Portuguese and not in English. This way, I'm naturally developing my language skills a little bit each day. Obviously, this does not happen without some sacrifice. People are always recommending great books for me to read, but then I see the book is only available in English, so 99% of the time, I don't read it. I'm sure I'm missing out on some great books, but these are the choices we make. Today, my priority is to improve my Spanish and Portuguese. How much of a priority is learning English for you? This is a personal decision that only you can answer, as everyone has different priorities, commitments, and interests. But if you feel like watching a film, then watch one in your target language instead of your native language. It will require more effort, but if you have this mindset, then eventually it will add up to hundreds of extra hours of exposure to the language. The third and final thing that I want to share with you is more of an anecdotal observation of polyglots instead of something intended to directly improve your language skills. It has to do with the way that polyglots interact with the world. I believe, and maybe you agree, that a person who is educated, informed, and multilingual is more tolerant, more flexible, and more curious about the world. 
At least in my experience, all the polyglots that I have met are very kind people, and despite their impressive talents and accomplishments, they are normally very humble and modest people. I think this is a natural result of learning other languages, cultures, and different perspectives to see the world. The more we learn a language, the better we are able to express ourselves, connect with other cultures, and understand them. Languages shorten the distance between different people and cultures and remind us that we are all human and we are all ultimately the same. When I listen to polyglots like Luca, Steve and Richard, this is the impression I get from them. This is not to say that learning languages is the only way to become more tolerant, flexible and curious, but it is definitely one of the more fun and fulfilling ways. Finally, before I finish, I want to tell you about that gift that I have prepared for you. It is a short guide that I created for my students called Polyglot Tips. This guide is my attempt to share a little bit of what I have learned from them and encourage you to discover more about the fascinating lives of polyglots. It not only includes the seven language learning techniques and tips used by the world's most talented polyglots, but also a list with more than 50 English words and phrases for you to expand your vocabulary. If you're looking to develop your English fluency, then I really recommend reading this guide. I'll leave you a link below for you to download your free copy at schoolofduda.com. Okay, this is the end of this episode. I would love to hear what you think about the polyglots mentioned in this episode. Do you know any polyglots? Are you a polyglot? Or would you like to be a polyglot one day? Why not answer by leaving me a comment on my website under this podcast episode or on Instagram? If you'd like to support this podcast, then please share it with a friend. You can also leave me a review on wherever you like to listen. Okay, thank you once again for listening, and I look forward to talking to you in the next episode. Until next time. <laughs>